Blog Talk Radio. Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Dennis Taylor and we're happy to have the second of our series of discussions with Patty Bursard, who held the last discussion, the first one in this series, uh, dealing with an issue that is going to affect all of us. And uh, what we want to do is continue on and talk about issues and talk about special things that we need to do to prepare. Um, she talked to me personally about some things after the show last, last Saturday, and we'll cover those today. So write down your questions, and uh, everyone's muted now except for Patty and I, and we will go ahead with a discussion and then open it up for questions later. Um, Patty did provide me with a number of videos and uh, links to YouTube videos, and we got some of them on just to let you know you'll be able to connect to those, and we will be figuring out a way to get the rest of them available so you can all see them. Um, But they're not on right now. Some of them, one's a 95-minute video. So just to alert you that we are trying to provide as much information directly on online with links where possible. Patty, again, we welcome you and thank you for your time and your wonderful experience. Would you provide just a brief introduction for those who didn't listen to the first series? Tell them about your background. Um, seven years in the Army, missile systems, communications, you know, uh, nuclear, biological, and uh, chemical response team. After that, I did uh, work for NASA. Did an orbital um, work once, but I also did all their computer upgrades, so I have access to um, all their equipment. So I'm doing this real, you know, actual live capture stuff from orbital. So this isn't. This has nothing to do with um, religion or spirituality, or you know. Visions. This is hard data. Um, after that, you know, I've worked for you know like Lockheed Martin and Polaris, and I built the robots they use in it at uh, Fukushima right now. Things like that. What we Amazing. have is a second sun, which NASA now admits to, and they say it's not going to come in the system, which is true. But they're lying by omission. What it's bringing with it is seven planets, and they're they're the problem. They overlap ours. So basically, we've got a pass by coming uh, this month, and now through November is going to be all hell breaks loose. But it's starting earlier because they're then the, the film that I want everybody to watch says because all these stellar bodies were pushing a lot of debris and it's hitting us right now. We've had three major power outages over wide areas just yesterday. This stuff is impacting us, you know, twenty four seven now. And with all the plutonium in the atmosphere from Fukushima I mean, the Bartol's gauges have been off the scale for, you know, more than eight months. It's supercharging the atmosphere. We're already getting Carrington events. I mean, according to the the, the first alignment, stellar body alignment happens on the 17th, but it's not going to wait that long. And who is indicating it will be on the, the 17th? That's where all the mechanics puts it. It's the seventh. Okay. So, but I don't. That's uh, what I'm saying. It's not going to wait. I mean, that's going to be the worst. I mean, that's when it's really going to start shaking the planet up. But it's not going to wait that long. That was the projected, you know, really bad day starts. But it's not waiting uh-huh. for that because of the dust. It's starting like right now. 
Okay. That's why I put up the uh, media detection live feed from the spam network. Because right now England's the only one that's not under somebody's thumb, and they're actually broadcasting the live feed of what's hitting our atmosphere. Okay. Um, we have a lot of amateur astronomy groups throughout the United States, and I'm surprised that they're not. They're a lot not. of them are broadcasting them. Uh, the are major, they? the major observatory people. We've had, we've lost six of our major astronomers because they were going to talk. They were killed. They were killed. When was that? Recently, over the, the the past two months, we've lost six of them. Well, then we know what's going on. They're trying to yeah. shush everything up. Yeah. Okay. And they've got my IP block, which is why I'm not even on the site where this is going to be displayed at this point. They're blocking my IP, sending emails. They're wiping stuff off of e and &E News. I mean, so they don't want me getting we, this word out. So could we get something that's being released in England? Is there a way to tap into that information? Yes, I put a live link on, on, on Facebook. It's on with the same link of the video that explains everything. Okay. Um, there's a question that came up. It says, when... Will the discussion begin on the second sun? Well, you've already begun the discussion. You're the second sun really that, isn't fact, the issue. It right. stays outside the but, system. It's, it's her planet. She came with seven. Right. Okay. There's a picture that is attached to this discussion. The background information has a picture of that second sun that Patty right. took with her own camera with a red lens filter. No, that, Please that's look at thermographic, because that's the only way you can look at it. Okay, The only way you can see it is in thermograph. All right. She throws no Thank light. Thank you for clarifying. So everyone asks, well, how do we know this is happening? Well, there's the picture. Um, it has not been touched up, I presume. It has not no. been altered and, in any way. And, and NASA has one on their server, and they airbrushed it out. But you gotta, okay. if, if you have any observatory or any um, software, even Google will work. There's a slider down the bottom. Move it to thermographic. It's the only way you're going to see it. Move slide. To thermographic. There are semicircles surrounding our sun in that picture, which is very interesting. Do you know what those would represent? See, I'm not looking at the picture you're looking at. Is it on your site? No. Um, yes, you put it. There were two or three pictures. I, I, I wish I'd have had more time to actually get into it. Is it the planet, not the Planet X observation and orbital analysis? It's the okay. red sun, red sky with the red sun and another sun, and then there are semicircles, kind of like uh, it looks more like a the one with the blue electron background? going around a nucleus or something. There's another question. Uh, Doreen says, will, will we see major earthquakes soon? Yes, the 17th. Before this month is out, we're going to lose California. And we're talking a magnitude 15 minimum. It's going to start in Seattle because that's what's okay. going to be facing it. Okay, will you please hurry and describe the earth changes soon? 
you did this last time, so if you haven't heard the first of the series, please go back. But if you could just quickly reiterate when, when, that. When, it, uh, when the planetary body gets between us and the sun, we're going to lose our magnetic field. And what that lets is UV, A, B, and C, and ultraviolet hit the surface directly. You don't want to be out in that because you'll die. And before that, our power grids are going to go down. The longest nuclear power plant that I know about has fuel to run generators for two weeks. And that's even if the, you know, the systems don't fry entirely which may happen. So we're going to have meltdowns. And there's far more than 104 they're talking about. Massachusetts lists one, we have five. So you're going to have fallout to deal with. You know, core melts, right. like Fukushima. Within two weeks of the grid going down. That's two weeks at the outside. There are many that only have about a week, and and the ones that lose their systems due to the Carrington event aren't going to have even a day before they melt out. You have average of about seven hours topped before the core melts out the bottom, blows things up. Because as soon as the core hits water, you get the hydrogen, and boom. That's what happened at Fukushima. Those cores were already out of the building and they hit a water layer in, in underneath the building that generated the hydrogen that caused them to blow up. Okay, so you said that we need to be 250 miles away from any of these generators, even if they're not functioning at the present time. Like I've got one here in Omaha. Um, 150 miles is a kill zone. And that's because the rod pools are going to catch on fire. And most plants that are, even though they're shut down, they have a lot of rods in the pools. And there's also other locations okay. that are not listed as power plants because they're not. They just store rods in, in pools. I've, I've, you know, on my site, I've listed a lot of maps that need to be printed out to, to gauge where it's going to be safe from that. Because that's immediate. Uh, one th that's, that's, okay, you know, one thing too. All the other effects aside, that's going to be immediate. Because you, you get that fallout on you, you've got maybe two days of life tops. So it can't be washed off? No. That's, that, the fallout when rods go up, no, you can't wash that off. They, they can't even operate to save you. Okay. So that is primary. That, that's going to be one of the first major issues, that and quakes. That's why I've been pushing so hard to get all the nuclear power set, you know, shut down. And I don't know, take the rods and stick them in a lake somewhere. It's about the only way to, you know, take a miss at this problem. Um, any more questions coming up? No. Okay. So... Let's go over again. Number one, people need to move away, first of all, immediately. Immediately. From any of these locations. The, yeah, the cheapest way to, get, to, to do this is get away from it, and people are buying the old metal storage containers, digging a uh -huh. hole in the ground, sticking it down there, and outfitting it as a little mini apartment, and get at least three, you know, three, two or three feet of dirt over you. With just a dig out where your door is to close and seal it up, because you can't you can't seal up completely. You still need oxygen. That's why I'm recommending people get a hydrogen generator, because that'll give them power. 
and gas to cook with. And the gas from the hydrogen generation system can be put into a generator to run power. You drill a hole through the, under the carburetor, you know, under the air filter on the carburetor, put your gas, your hydrogen gas in there, and H2O for every hydrogen bit of gas you make, you're making two oxygen. So just running that and storing the gas to cook with gives you oxygen, clean oxygen. From water and clean water. You got to have clean water to start with. You got to have enough to get through six weeks at least, and it's three gallons per person per day. That's a, that's a standard amount. Okay, so you mentioned briefly the hydrogen unit, hydrogen generator. Yep, you said just I, Google hydrogen power. I po- no, I've posted links. The one that you want oh, to get, you? the one that you want to get is what, made for a car. It's made to run a car entirely. And it runs off DC, runs off a battery. Because you've got to start generating hydrogen first. Once it's running, if you have it hooked to a generator system, all, almost all generators now have a 12-volt port on them to put back and recharge your battery. And later, after the event, you can hook, you know, solar panels and things to it, and wind generators and whatnot. But the key thing now is is to have that running to create your oxygen and tank the hydrogen because you're going to need it to cook. Once the UV and, and microwaves come down, there ain't going to be any more trees. They're going to all catch fire and burn in the houses. Anything made of wood going to burn. So if you're going to stock up on wood to cook with, do it first. Do it now. Because there ain't going to be any. And you need seeds to replant afterwards. Okay. And a medical. You can, you know, whatever you can get for medical, including, you know, antibiotics and everything else that you can get. You, it's not going to be cheap now. The prices are going up daily. And then there's a shipping issue. You pay the extra money to get it overnight. <laughs> it's the only thing I can suggest. Because once, you know, People go outside and see this going down. You know they've already said they're going to pull the banks. So if you've got money in the bank, pull it out today. And money's only going to be good for you know a couple of weeks into this event. After that, it's not going to matter. It's going to be worthless. Right. So exchange will be food commodities. Yeah. Food and water. Fresh water. And, of course, medical supplies. Because there's going to be, you know, people that will make it through this out of dumb luck. When the pole shift goes down, there's going to be everybody on the coast is dead. That's just, you know, if you're on the coast of the ocean, forget it. Okay, that's all coasts. All coasts. Around the world, yeah. Yeah. One of these bodies is going to come in close enough that it may. It's happened before. We don't know if it's going to happen this time. But if it passes close enough, it temporarily slows down Earth's rotation. The problem with that is the water keeps going. The water is tied to the moon. Okay. So, so tidal wave. Yeah. 
and kind of wave traveling mentioned- at you know a hundred you know a thousand miles per hour or more. And you said that they will actually have an ocean here in the middle of the U.S. Yes, and that is because of the methane hydrate. Once the oxygen level gets to the right amount, you don't even need to set that off. Oxygen and methane with a little bit of petrochemical mixed in is what we call a monopropellant. They use it to you know, fuel rockets. That's what the Gulf is. That's going to be one of the largest man-made explosions ever. How far in from the coast should they go? It's, it's by altitude, right, not by distance? When the poles melt, that's plus 200 feet above current sea level. And then you've got to go above that for, you know, your, your tsunami. So there's not a whole lot. The mountain ranges are about it. And that's going to be a wild ride, too, just being on a mountain. Because gravity is anyway. currently all over the place. So, I sent my so daughters tell- to where I think they'll be safe as best they can. I'm not making it through this, but I'm already so messed up now it doesn't matter. I'm going to stay here right to the end and, and get the, as much information out as I can. You're in Massachusetts? Yep. So I'm, we're gone. Yeah. And, and I mean, my basement is actually, uh, the floor of my basement is sea level <laughs> right now. When we have floods oh, here, it's actually, you know, minus three. <laughs> But, I mean, my dad's on oxygen, so, he, I mean, it's not like there isn't going to be any resources for that sort of thing. Sure. So they need to be mobile and carry everything with them and move yep. to higher ground. In your car today. Stop packing your trunk. Homes will be burned because they're... Mostly wood. Mostly the ultraviolet is, is is it's like taking your entire house and putting it in a microwave, and when you think about it, all your walls have electrical wires in them. It's metal. You know, you ever put something metal in a microwave? Yeah, they're sparks. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why you got to ca- anything electronic you plan to keep. You got to Faraday cage it inside of. You're, wherever you're gonna, you know, you know, ride this out. That's why a lot of people are taking the big, you know, old uh, shipping containers, you know, renting a bulldozer for the day or, or um, a, a bobcat, digging a trench, dropping the container down in there, and then burying it with just an aisle way to get out. That's the cheapest way out of it. Okay. There's a company out there right now doing it for people. I don't know the name. And don't know the name. I got that. Somebody posted that somebody's out there doing that. I'm sure they're very busy, so if you mm-hmm. haven't already contacted them, maybe too late. But, I mean, even... Uh, you know, tractor trailer trucks, empty, empty, the big empty aluminum trailers. If you could get one of those underground, that would do it too. You need to expedite this. Um. You know, this is so alarming to the fact that our government yes. okay. the other not thing is killing anyone. Mobile home trailers and mobile homes. If you can rent a bobcat, dig out, put it underground, up high. That would work too. 
You okay. understand? It's a matter of getting in anything you've got, campers, whatever, put them on the ground. Buy, buy some of the big corrugated metal tubing, you know, like they put under the streets for drains, those big, you know, that you can stand up in. A section of that pushed up against the side of your trailer, put dirt over it. Field expediency. Bury it. And you need a vent for air, so well, that, that's is what there your, your, your entrance that? way is, yeah. But you don't want your entrance exposed to the UV because you'll be you'll you'll heat your your wall up. Okay, so that's why you Just want like one of those corrugated metal tubing. Is a tunnel leading into this facility, yes. Yes. Um, and therefore it's not directly exposed to the sun. Okay. So you Hallway have going dirt in. Over it. Yep. And three feet of dirt on top of that. At least. Yep. Okay. So if you got a camper, you know, not the pop-up type, because that ain't going to hold the dirt, but you know, <laughs> the fixed type. Okay. Yeah, you can you know, rent a bobcat. It's 200 bucks a day. Dig your hole out, put your camper in, and bury it. Okay. The question came up from Doreen, why isn't the government in hiding yet? They they already uh, called in everybody that's uh, overseas. That's why they closed all the uh, all the embassies. embassies. Everybody with a seat's already been called. Our U.S. troops are now deployed in the United States around their dumb entrances, and they've got Soviet troops and to you know deal with the crowds and to put people in the FEMA camps where you're just gonna die. Because they are not rigged to keep you alive in those things. That's a field expediency, and that's why they've got all those plastic coffins that you can fit three bodies in. Yeah, they've been collecting those for a long time. Yep. I saw pictures of them on railroad cars. You do not want to riot, because that's what Obama wants. Because once you do that, he issues martial law, and then he gets to take everything you want, you know, everything you've got. And we don't want martial law put down because that means the people who have prepared, they'll show up with troops and take everything. So they die. This has been well planned out. World War II was a practice run for concentration camps and such. Okay, any more questions from out there? I think we should open it up now so that people can can ask. Uh, you mentioned that we need to get generator and the conversion unit, a hydrogen generator. No, the hydro, you, the generator you can get from anywhere, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatnot. Doesn't matter. Just okay. make sure you any get one that's got a 12 volt port on it as well as 110 AC. The 12 volts to recharge your battery. To get hydrogen, you need the battery first, the car battery. It will do. It's not the best, but it will work. And the, the hydrogen kit, you want to get the smallest one you can get for a car. Because they're all over the place. I put links out there for okay. them as well. They'll not only make hydrogen to run your generator rather than using gasoline, but for every hydrogen bit you, you create, you create into, you know, you're freeing two oxygen. It's going to give you fresh air. Okay, so we'll be able to run the generators inside this unit, and it'll provide the fresh air. No, that makes at, sense. At first, you're going to be running off a battery. Right, car run, battery. To, to, to split your hydrogen, because nothing, when when this carriage event goes down, nothing is electronic is going to survive. That's why I'm saying you need to basically Carrington, I mean, uh, Faraday cage yourself in metal grounded metal. Otherwise, anything outside of that a Faraday cage during this event is going to get fried, anything electronic. Okay, so... You don't you want to be running electrical stuff when it's really bad like that. Just around the 
the electronic equipment or around yourself too. You want to be it inside. Have to be around. You want to be inside it with your equipment. That's why I'm saying campers are yeah. nice. They're, they're, you know, they're they're metal. If you put a ground okay, spike and bury the thing in the earth, that, that basically Saturday yeah. cages you. But you don't want to be running electronics because you don't want to add to the charge inside the thing. You got to have air coming in. Charge is going to come in with the air. You don't want to blow your electronics, but you need the gas. You need to start making the gas as soon as you can. That's why I recommended people take the, the tank off their uh, gas grills. Get a wide splitter, run your hydrogen generator, tank the gas so you have something to cook with. And you're creating oxygen to breathe while you're doing it. Okay, that makes sense. So let me go over that again. We need to start making the gas now. So use one of those tanks from a gas grill, and that will be your fuel. You can keep refilling that with hydrogen. And you can use okay. it to cook with. Because the automotive right. one is going to create more hydrogen than you need to run the generator. It's made to run a car engine. Sure. Okay, hope everybody understands that. Um, a question came up, what are the first signs that people are going to see so that they know it's imminent? We're already seeing it. You, you, both, the transformers on poles blowing up and the wires themselves heating up and melting. Where's that happening? We just lost almost you know, a quarter, more than a quarter of Florida yesterday. Another one in Ohio. And where was the other one? Jersey, I believe. And this is already happening. We have asteroids, small ones, little tiny things, peppering us right now. That This body pushed in front of it. And because of all the plutonium and really fissionable elements that Fukushima's been throwing out for two, more than two years, our atmosphere is already pretty supercharged. We've been having pole fires right along as far up as Chicago. But Texas has been getting Darryl, the worst of it, and Florida went yesterday. There is a picture of the pole fires, by the way, that we're attaching, so people will be able to see that. Um, in fact, there are two or three pictures. Yeah, I put a bunch of links out there, and, and including the ones recent ones from like this past month. It's ramping up. Hello. Yes. Can you tell us the links that she put out, please? Be on this website. What you can do is go to the archive. We haven't finished all of that yet because we ran out of space. Okay. Go to the arc of this discussion. We have 10 minutes left, okay? And we will have the links there for you to connect to in okay. an hour. Okay. Can I ask Patty a question? Sure. We live in Arkansas, so where should we go to? Be safe. The highest mountains you can find that you can get to. That's where you want to dig in. You said dig in, that means go into the mountain itself? Yeah. Like I said, the the people are taking their, their, their campers, or if you don't have that, a tractor trailer. You know, the trailer from a tractor trailer set, or a storage container. Dig it down in the earth, put it down in there, and put a corrugated passageway to it and bury it. Set up your, you know, We're your shelter in, in there. We're in a motorhome. Yeah, motorhome. You know, rent a rent a bobcat. There's, it's two hundred bucks a day. Dig, use the bobcat to find a place up high enough. Use the bobcat to dig it out. Drive your camper down in there, and then you know, with a with a tunnel to get to it, out of out of you know the corrugated metal, 
and bury us. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. Everybody's going to thank you very much. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, yeah, I do have another question. How far inland from these coastlines are going to be toast? Or is it just anybody that's not underground? If you're not above, at least, at a, at, at a guesstimate, I'd say a 1,000 feet above sea level, you're not going to make it. That's anywhere, correct? What's that? That's just any location, correct? Yes, at any location. Around they give sixty five feet of they give sixty five feet as the listing on, on the icebergs that are already in the ocean melting, okay? Which are two thirds in the water. So that sixty five feet is only based on the one third that's above the water. What we're talking is the poles melting. That's the glaciers and stuff that are up on land. What? That's plus two hundred feet. That's just the water level. That doesn't count waves. And the tsunami that's going to happen. I got a question for you, Patty, and you're probably going to think I'm crazy. Did you see the movie Absolute Zero? The movie what? Absolute Zero about the pole shift. No, I haven't. Did it scare you? <laughs> I've been busy actually, you know, taking our actual observations of, of what's up there. Right. And, we and what's going on with the earth. We appreciate your research and everything. That's, I mean, this film, these guys, they didn't uh, do that kind of... They came at it from an entirely different perspective, the film. But it, it perfectly meshes with all my data. And I watched it last night, and it scared me to death. The, di- the distance we need to be away from Patty, the shore, is at least 150 miles. The 150 miles is away from a reactor or a rod storage unit. Nobody on the shore is going to survive, period. They're going to go underwater, correct? Yeah, they'll be underwater. And this is going to happen between now and the 17th of August? No, August... The end of August and the beginning of September, we're going to start losing places like Seattle and 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 the top of California. Can the quake, massive quakes. Because when it first comes through, we're talking. When we get the next alignment, it, the body is so close. We we've already had three, no, four alignments happen. And the Japan quake was one of them. Chile was one of them. When these bodies line up, the gravity is boosted. The next one hits Seattle, and it's going to be like a mag-15. Wow. Okay. And what parallels do you need to be away from for the pole shift? The new south magnetic pole is going to be right just north of Tagish Lake in Alaska. Now, I mean, as far as in the United States, what parallel do we need to be away from? What degree? No, it doesn't work that way. If you figure Tagish Lake in, in Alaska as the new south magnetic pole and shift that, that's going to tell you it, all your lines of latitude and longitude are going to shift. So telling you that now isn't going to make any difference. I've got a map of the new layout on my site as well. Okay. Um, and that's more or less to do with after because you don't want to be on the pole. You'll freeze. Either. 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 I mean, my daughter's listening, that's it. I know we're one of them. 
That's the same here. I've got one daughter that has listened, and everybody else thinks we're nuts. Yeah, they think we're walking around with ten and a half on with, with the antenna problems. I've got one son that lives on the Mississippi Gulf Coast with a brand new baby. You can always do what you can do. Hey, if you say that the South Pole is going to be in Alaska, so everything's going to flip flop and will be upside down. Yeah. So in reality, it's a graph. not all that in your life. What's that? I said, in reality, are we not going to all die anyway? No. The people who want to vid and are prepared will make it through. And the thing is, you only want to tell close people, you know, family members, wherever you're going to set up, don't tell anybody. Because, it's, yeah. you know, if it comes down to a person who didn't prepare and they've got kids, they'll kill to save the kids and steal everything you got. I agree. Don't mix it up with authority. Thank you. Um, those that are going to be saved by the government and put in these um, um, places, um, they won't have workers. These will all be uh, officials. No, all, those, all the camps are, are fully staffed as of now. Oh, are they? But bear in mind, every single one of them has train tracks. With train, you know, to to move a lot of people quickly, and most of the receiving buildings have big two foot around gas pipes to the top of the building, like they did at Auschwitz. They don't want people to live through this. They want five hundred thousand people, and that's it. And the majority of the people, the five hundred thousand, they're taking down the dumbs with them. Well, all these people underground going to make it? All these government officials? No, they're going to get crushed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down one of those dumps if you paid me. Yeah. I didn't think God would let them survive anyway for doing what they're doing to us. And the other issue is, they, you know, I've posted pictures of what the Air Force uses to make the tunnels, their uh, transportation system between them. They're going to get busted open and filled with water. Yeah, that makes sense. They have a tunnel under the mountains from the shore of California where they're moving all the nuclear subs now. It actually goes under the mountains to their dumb that's on the other side. <laughs> they actually lost the sub there once when they were doing it. Mm-hmm. That was in the news, I don't know, ten, eight, ten years ago. Are, are the truck shipments that are going into Denver, Colorado, going into the underground now? Yep. The Queen of England even is is coming here because England's toast. The reason the reason why I say that is I was I was a truck driver last year and we made a shipment to Denver, Colorado to UPS, and on the bill all it said was general merchandise. Yep. And I get to see that's where it went. In the middle of the country, uh, the north middle of the country, they've got a, a, a giant salt cabin that they've been moving stuff for 20 years. Wow. I mean, this is so big that you can you can drive four tractor trailer trucks abreast inside it. Right. This, I mean, right now they're not even eating the radioactive food we've got. Hmm. That's why they don't care about the fallout. And they've bumped the limits up so that they don't have to do any, you know, take any action. 